First of all, I'd like to thank uh, Katja for inviting Media Prima to speak at this conference. I think uh, over the last couple of days, there's been a lot of talk about, <clears throat> about disruption. So it's, uh, it's a nice counterpoint to listen to one of the disruptees. Uh, I, a lot of, apparently, a lot of big fish are going to become extinct. So I initially, initially, I thought of simplifying the presentation by putting two slides. The first would be a picture of a T-Rex. The second would be a white flag. But, uh, but anyway, so uh, we, let, me, let me just uh, tell you a little bit about Media Prima, uh, because we, we do have, at the present, a viable business. Uh, and, uh, but a lot of it actually is very, very traditional. I th a lot of it is anathema to uh, the presentations that have been done by, uh, by the various speakers over the last couple of, uh, of days. Uh, when we started in 2003, we basically had two main assets. Uh, TV3, which is uh, Malaysia's largest uh, and oldest commercial broadcaster, uh, and 43% of uh, the New Stra Straits Times Press. Uh, th these are both very venerable companies. Uh, New Straits Times Press is 170 years old, uh, and TV3 is about 30 years old. If you look at the chart, because we, we built the, the company through a mixture of, uh, of acquisitions and organic growth, but if you look at, at what we are, at our ecosystem, it's just the bottom left-hand corner which, which probably has, has any kind of resonance for, for the conference today. It's our, our digital business. Everything else is very, very traditional. Uh, and, and this does have some benefits because collectively, if you look across the reach that we have through our various platforms, we, we estimate roughly, very, very non-scientifically, that we reach up to 25 million people a day, which for a country of 30 million people is pretty good. You know, we have, we have uh, uh, one of the largest newspaper groups in the country. We've got uh, probably the most dominant uh, television group. We have very successful radio stations, out of home advertising, and so on and so forth. But again, once again, all of this is very, very traditional. And the challenge that we face is that our industry landscape is changing. If you look at media consumption, <clears throat> for example, that's, uh, I think these are from 2014, uh, people spend about one and a half hours watching television, they spend uh, just over half an hour listening to the radio, and in 18 minutes, 18 to 20 minutes an hour reading newspapers. So television is still very, very much the, the, the leading media. Uh, and uh, we're very fortunate that our four television stations captures a lion's share of that. But increasingly, uh, people are going digital because of things like, uh, like uh, uh, a, a better broadband access, uh, m mobile penetration, uh, and, so, and so on and so forth. So Malaysia stands out to be a, a very, very multi-platform, multi-device uh, 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 audience, really. <clears throat> So the challenge that we have, oh, sorry, and, and just uh, uh, talking about some of the, the online viewing habits, uh, you know, people spend a lot more, a lot more time uh, online, they spend three hours on their mobile devices, uh, about the same amount of time on their laptops and PCs. So, for example, for the television business, the, the definition of television is now changing. It's not, just, uh, it's not just the device, it's actually the content. Because people, we posit that, that people still watch television, they just don't watch television on TVs anymore, right? They access it through their phones, through their tablets. Uh, and this is, this is a challenge for us because we're a, largely we're an advertising-driven company, uh, which means that uh, a lot of our revenue is based on how our content is metered. Uh, and this is, this is a, a challenge. So one of the things that, that we, we did was we, we identified very early on that uh, we needed to try and move with the times. Uh, in fact, uh, we launched uh, our, our biggest, single biggest online property is, is a portal. It's a video portal called Tonton. Some of you may have, have, have seen this. And it's essentially where we provide all our video content, all our catch-up content, uh, and uh, we stream our four television stations plus a couple of other stations uh, online. We launched this in 2010. We started working on it uh, about two years before that. So we, we started working on it before high-speed broadband uh, was installed in Malaysia, and before, even before the iPad was launched. Um, I, this is before my time, but I, I think that this, uh, the person who actually came up with the idea is here today, my colleague uh, Izam, Izam Omar, uh, and my, my theory is that he did this in a haze of narcotics, <laughs> because, because obviously it was well before its time. Uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry, Tish. Um, 
he was supposed to have done this presentation, so I'm getting back at him in this. Uh, so over the years, we've tried and built on this, uh, on this product. Uh, we started, uh, we made the, the, the product available via mobile. Uh, we started uh, uh, enriching uh, our content and enriching our, our reach as well. Uh, making it available through uh, device partners. Uh, if you buy a Samsung Smart TV, uh, the app is installed. Uh, and uh, today we have, uh, these figures up to 2014, but today we have close to 5 million registered users, which is, which is a, a, a sizable number of users. Um, so this is just a little bit about the growth uh, that we've, we've enjoyed uh, in terms of the number of registered users, page views and video views. Uh, and uh, we've also gone through a couple of, of iterations of the, uh, of the product itself. So we, at the beginning of this year, we launched, we migrated to a new platform, uh, and uh, we're, we're trying to imp consistently improve uh, the user interface and the user experience. Uh, we're trying to do similar things as well with other parts of the company. I mean, print is even more traditional than television. So we're, what we're trying to do is make sure that our content uh, is online, is available via uh, apps, uh, via web websites, and we're also branch branching into e-publications. Uh, which is very interesting. I think the, the presenter before me saying that uh, a lot of the products uh, for the Times in India were not branded as Times products, and we're going down a very, very similar route as well. Uh, Zip uh, is an e-magazine. We launched it a couple of years ago. Uh, uh, sorry, a couple of months ago. We have about 50,000 uh, users for that already. It's a, it's a lifestyle portal, and it's got very little media prima branding. Uh, similarly for radio networks, uh, one of the things that, that we found is that radio tends to be very commoditized. It's essentially the same playlists. Uh, it not only competes with, uh, with other radio stations, but other devices as well. Everybody has their own personalized radio station by plugging in their iPad, uh, their iPod or, or their device uh, and shuffling their own playlist. Uh, so uh, one of the strategies that we've employed to maintain our relevance is to make sure that our radio station uh, our radio stations uh, uh, maintain a very, very strong online presence uh, so that we, we deepen the engagement with our listeners. Uh, and, and, and we're very pleased that this is uh, something that's worked. So, so challenges in the online space. Uh, piracy is obviously a big thing. Um, Malaysians generally don't pay for content. Hopefully, you know, hopefully they'll subscribe to iFlix. But, uh, but uh, I mean, <laughs> shout out to the host today. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but generally, that, that is a problem. I think it's a regional issue as well. So, so that the piracy and free content is, is a problem. Uh, we, we face, for us, for Media Prima, we face some of these problems, slightly less so, because a lot of the content that we offer is local, is local in nature. So uh, there's, uh, although our content does get put up on free sites, uh, I think the problem is less rampant than Hollywood content, which, which seems to be uh, very, very pervasive. Uh, monetization is a problem, so constantly we've got to try and, um, and, and, and make sure that we come up with different models where we can, uh, we can monetize our presence and, and the scale of our presence uh, online. Uh, broadband pricing is also an issue uh, because we're a little bit more expensive. If you look at this graph compared to Singapore and Thailand, uh, it is more expensive. But, but this can be solved by a number of different things. I think compression technology is improving. Uh, so we can deliver video content over, over lower grade networks. Uh, but, uh, but as broadband pricing uh, uh, comes down, then I think we will see uh, greater engagement online. Uh, and and the, the last bit is actually the most important because I think moving online, well, a lot of the stuff that we've done uh, up to this point is to make sure that we take our existing properties and, and make them available online. But I think one of the things we're, we're, we're finding out is, is, uh, is online consumption. The, the mentality and the consumption patterns behind that are, are very, very different from how things are consumed uh, traditionally. Uh, and uh, I think that's one of the challenges for us as well, uh, is to make sure that we utilize the benefits of being present in a digital environment and try to pass those benefits on to a consumer. And we're talking a lot about, about customization, about making sure the content uh, speaks uh, more with more resonance to an online audience and so on. Uh, so finally, the opportunities that we have. We're a very open source company because we are, uh, as I mentioned, we're, we're, we're free to air. Uh, 
uh, we're advertising based and uh, we're very happy that at least on the content side we've managed to forge a couple of collaborations uh, with, with, with iFlix. We supply content to iFlix but as well as to other platform owners uh, in the region, in the country and in the region. Uh, as well as, as, uh, as integration between our different platforms. I think one of the advantages of being an integrated media company uh, is that we can leverage off uh, our different platforms uh, to sort of make uh, some of these properties bigger uh, and more engaging, a more 360 experience. Um, and then this is just the final thing. I think, there's, uh, as I mentioned earlier, there's, a, there's been a lot of talk about how uh, disruption is going uh, is going to make traditional media less relevant. And I think that is true to a certain extent. But I think traditional media still offers the scale uh, and, and, the, and the sort of large platform communal viewing type of, uh, of, of opportunities that a lot of other more personalized uh, delivery cannot. Uh, and this particularly is true for things like sports and for large events like uh, Anugrah Juara Lagu, which is our biggest uh, annual music uh, awards uh, 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 concert uh, last year we reached six million viewers, which is uh, which is which is huge. At the same, I mean, for for people to access uh, the content uh, on a communal on a simultaneous basis, that's a big thing. Uh, and and plus the other thing is that I think if you speak to a lot of people who are becoming pr uh, uh, personalities and stars uh, on on uh, on YouTube and on other social media, uh, I think. It, Ultimately, their goal is to become traditional stars. All of them want to act in movies. All of them want to have their own television series. Uh, they want to sell their own books or their own line of, of fashion and so on and so forth. And, and that's where we come in because we still have uh, the reach uh, and the scale that, that, uh, that, that enables them to, uh, enables them to, to uh, accomplish their, their ambitions. Uh, so thank you very much for your attention. Thanks very much once again, Stikacha.